Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco. I'm working on another one of those flea market finds from Scott. This one is a Daiwa. It's the Daiwa SL 20 SH. And uh, if I remember, uh, this uh, SL was C line, but I think this one may have been called um, Seagate. Not sure. Well, I'm winding this wheel. I'm fe feeling a terrible gear grind in here. Not sure what's going on. It's a, uh, this is a nice size wheel. It's high speed. You can tell by the bump out on the side here. And uh, it's got the frame size of um, the Squitter Junior, the 146, both in terms of diameter and width. So a very nice casting and jigging wheel without uh, all the capacity. But uh, overall, the, uh, the wheel uh, seems to be working, other than, as I mentioned, we got that that gear noise and it's kind of almost like uh, grinding your teeth it comes right up through the handle here and it may actually be the handle we'll have to see you know what it is the handle knob how do you like that so it says four ball bearings it wouldn't surprise me if one of those ball bearings is in the handle here so we'll uh we'll just throw some oil on there see if we can't quiet that up there is an oil port here we'll go ahead and put some in there as well and we'll see if maybe that doesn't uh, improve that. You can just, there you go, just like that. What do they say? Squeaky wheel, right? All right, well, Scott, you're in luck then. I think you might have got away with something here. I don't know if you complained to the seller about a, a, a gear grind, only to find out it was really the handle. There you go. All right, we're going to take the exterior pieces and parts off. As we do, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you do like the art of fishing wheel repair. If you like to learn about fishing wheels, if you like to see how they're made, if you like to understand a little bit about the differences between manufacturers and the differences between uh, types of fishing wheels, well then this channel should serve you very well. And I would uh, encourage you to su subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit that notification button. That way you'll see all the ones that get posted and you'll be able to make a determination as to whether that's one that you want to see or not. We remove the handle nut, then the handle can come up. Then we can remove the star adjuster, and there's a there's a metal washer that's going to come up with that. Good good place to tell you if you're working on a reel and you don't have the schematic for the reel and you haven't worked on the reel before, or simply put, you don't trust your memory, take pictures along the way. Those pictures will be invaluable as you go to reassemble the reel. If you get stuck, and you might want to poop pile that idea, but I'll tell you right away, I've come back to the pictures more than I probably care to admit, and uh, that uh, picture is worth a thousand words. So. All right, well, here's another reason why we may have had that grind coming up the shaft. We got a whole bunch of broken line on the uh, the spool shaft here, so somebody probably gave up on this reel. Not understanding it probably was as simple as oiling the handle and getting rid of that trapped line. Well, there you go. So sometimes you uh, you get lucky, and sometimes well, it's a, somebody's loss for probably not taking that next step. All right, there's about six screws here. There's four ball bearings in this reel. I'm going to take those screws off, and as I take them off, I'm going to put them onto my table. And I do that because I want to make sure that I note any differences in the screws. So there's two long ones here that are machine threads. Those are the same. And now we have four more that are holding this on. I want to make sure that I, I understand what those are. And they're also holding a trim ring on. Now curiously enough, this trim ring here has a big dent in it. I don't know what might have happened there. Probably hit the gun wall of a boat or it hit a uh, rod holder. I don't know. That's quite a significant dent there. I would say more than your average bump. All right, well, we're noticing two things about the other four screws. One of them is that they're shorter. That makes sense because you got the bump out here. The other is that they have a tapered head as opposed to a rounded head. So you know that the four that are tapered and a little bit shorter go in this gold trim ring and that the others, all those two go on the bottom. Once you take all of those off and you've 
understood where they go and you made a mental note of it or you've taken a picture of it, then I recommend that you put them into a parts tray. I use a parts tray for all the work that I do and uh, I recommend that you do the same. I separate them in the corners. I use the bottom of a fast food container at the moment. That changes from time to time, but uh, in all cases I always use it. We should be able to pull this off now. There we go. And uh, well, you know what? I think some of that gear grind is actually gear grind. Look at this old grease in here, right? It's all coagulated and greased up. Wouldn't be surprising as we were turning that main gear that that old grease, particularly here, was bumping on. And uh, that could be a cause of it as well. We're going to clean this reel up. We're going to get it going again. You want to take these two yoke springs off before you do anything. They have a habit of kind of leaving the building if you don't pay attention to it. Uh, you could be just kind of working to get a gear off or something. Next thing you know, they slip off the post and well, you got an issue. Also notice on this one how that uh, eccentric spring is mounted. If that thing came loose, real easy to say, okay, it must be like the pen and flip it around and put it on the top side. That's not the case. Please make the note of that. I'm going to use a penetrating oil here to start softening up the grease in that case. I'm just going to coat it and let it off to the side. That'll do its, its own thing. Now we'll take the stack off and we're going to notice as we take the stack off the orientation of the pieces on the gear shaft. So we have two tension washers there. That's for the uh, sensitivity of the star adjuster. Then we have a flat washer. It's rather wide. It's also rather dirty. And we have the bearing. The bearings appear to be stainless bearings. They're shielded, not sealed. I'm going to take that. And then we're going to flood that bearing here. So that the oil seeps in. Take those four pieces next then. I'm going to put those into the parts tray in a kind of a separate area. Noting that the flat one goes down. Got an awful lot of old grease on this main gear here. We have a one more washer underneath here I think. Let's see if we can get the whole thing up here. These are always kind of hard because I've been sitting around a while. And in this case, we also have the old traditional anti-reverse dog that's the, the tongue, tongue dog. And this one's on a stud. Let's see if we can't get this off. So we have a stud and we also have that, um, that spring. I'll show you how that goes back in when we do the reassembly. And now let's see if we can't work this one out. There's still a lot of stuff on this shaft here, so we'll just kind of go ahead and put the penetrating oil on there. We have a, a kind of a wad of grease there that might be holding it back. There's all kinds of reasons why it's a little tough to do, but eventually you will, uh, you will conquer that. I'm going to get this one off here. And yes, we did have another washer that goes to the top of this. Good place to take a picture. Let's wipe this down now. So it's obvious that this reel has not been serviced in quite some time and well I guess that's why Scott sent it in. I think what's happened here is we've probably got a, a, a washer here that's been pressed down. That's probably kind of grabbing that center so let's work that around. Appears to be a, a leather washer. I'm using the back side of the, the uh, razor knife. I'm not using the front side. This is a leather washer. And we're just going to keep kind of working it through, getting the pieces and parts off. The next one, I think, is the eared washer. It looks that way. Let's go ahead and see if we can bring that out. And if you just keep wrestling it, there we go. Eventually it will come through. There we 
least it should come through. I'm kind of stuck on one more piece here for some reason. There we go. All right. So we have the click ratchet for the anti-reverse dog. Clean that up and put that into the basket. We have the bottom that goes next that came off of here. Then we have these pieces. Let's see if we can push them through for the rest of the gear assembly. This is just being particularly, there we go. So these are washers that certainly should have been cared for and have not been. I'm going to use my razor knife as a wedge now just to kind of separate the washer from the metals. This is a good place to tell you if you have questions uh, leave them in the comments section and I will be happy to uh, try and respond to those questions for you try and give you an answer and uh, if I know what I'll try, if I don't know the answer I'll try and point you in the right direction so those are leather washers they look terrible but you know what they're flexible and as long as they're flexible uh, all you need to do is clean them up and uh, re-lube them they're porous. You want to put some drag washer grease or real grease on them. And uh, they're going to be ready to go again. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to clean the greening out of that main gear. Now the back is tarnished. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to, to restore that. You can't fix tarnish. But you can clean it off to the best that you can. And then we're going to grab a hard bristle brush and we're going to pull through the gear teeth here. While we're doing that to clear the old grease, we're going to check the teeth to make sure that the teeth are uniform and not bent or damaged or broken in any regard. And these are in good condition. All right, I think we have a bearing underneath. You'll notice that I'm not putting these washers away into my parts tray. I'm just leaving them off to the side. I'm going to pull the yoke. I'm going to take the uh, Jack and sit that down and we're going to pull these two screws because I believe that we have a bearing underneath. Take your picture. This is a half loop collar here. It's very easy to put the collar on the other side if you're not paying attention and I'm not certain but it is possible that if you put it on the other side it's going to interfere with the movement of something. So there's a reason why somebody only made a half collar there. So respect that reason and uh, take care of it. On the bottom side of this we have a very small copper kind of filler there that's going to go inside the bearing and sure enough we have a bearing. So I'm going to flood that area. I'm going to take that little washer put that in the middle of it. And then I'm going to just spray down this piece because there is some accumulated dry grease. And wherever that grease accumulates, well, it's going to slow the performance of the reel. So in this case, well, safe to say that that main shaft may not be working as well as you might want it to be. I got this question the other day. I got a, a wobbly main shaft. How do I fix that? Well, you fix it by replacing it. Sometimes this groove gets elongated and causes the shaft to wobble. And unfortunately, if that's happening to you, uh, well, you're going to have to replace the piece. All right. Put that back on. Remember that the semicircle was facing away from the anti-reverse dog side. Well, I can grab those two screws that were off to the side here. Those of you that know me and small screws know that we're having our deli fight. They usually win. We'll put the two of these back on. We'll show you how to reload this side then. We'll also show you that little uh, anti-reverse dog spring there. It's kind of an interesting one. Okay, we want to take that. Then we want to take our click ratchet. That's next. Now notice it's got a square. 
there is a square on the bottom. And when we took it off, we didn't notice the orientation on this one. But here's a, here's a little bit of a trick. When you, if you're turning it as a right-handed wheel, then the ramp side has got to be this way. Because when it turns backwards, it's going to catch the beak of that. Also, I find this a little interesting. Why do I have one piece of this click ratchet that's long when all the others are short? I don't, uh, I don't know the answer to that one. Here's your, uh, here's your assembly for your anti-reverse dog. It also it came out because there was some broken line in there, right? Find the beak. This is the beak. So it's going to be going this way as an assembly. It's going to mesh in like that. And this one's pretty easy. The spring side is going to go against this pin here. I can see that it's that there's a bend in the spring that tells me that the pressure was coming. And now you just need to figure out how to load the pressure. That's your load. I take this off because I've got to swing that around. Swing that around and then we install this. And that's how you logic it out even if you don't have the, uh, the schematic. So in case uh, we're going to try and get close with this, that spring actually went over here. This is a stud. It goes into the hole and now you can see how your dog is working and it kicks up against this other stud to hold it firm. We have a red washer that goes next. And then we can put that main gear on. But we're not going to put the main gear on until we put the grease in to freshly lube this piece. That's a big gear. That's how you get the gear ratio for a high speed reel. You need a big gear that's driving it and a small gear that it's driving and that's what gives you the higher ratio. So for one turn of this, that small gear, which is on the the worm drive is probably going to turn, oh, I would guess six times. All right, I'm going to remove this for a moment. I do want to put this back on next. It's just easier to do. Make sure that the yoke is clean. You'll notice on the yoke that we have two, plas uh, two small copper rings, washers. And those rings are going to be for the spools to sit on. So when you do this, put your drive in. Make sure that the slot side faces down towards the spool. And then you put those two washers on. And those little washers are going to stop the spring from getting jammed in the yoke mechanism. All right. Now that we have those two on, now we can take that main gear, put that on. You want to merge it to the gear, and then with some equal pressure, it's going to snap. And then let's just turn it, make sure that everything's working. Your anti-reverse is working. Your pinion gear is turning. Everything is good there. We have those three washers now. Wipe them off as best you can. This has got green on it. I, I think green. I'm not sure if that's mold or what that might be, but. To the extent that you can get it off, get it off. Now I'm going to use uh, Okuma's drag grease here. And uh, it's called Cal's Universal Drag Grease. It's an Okuma product. I'm going to really flood this with the grease. You can see how flooded it is. And then I'm going to wipe off the excess on the surface. You want to push the grease down into the pores of that washer. There's couple of round washers. One is bigger than the other. The big one is the one that goes below. It has a rectangle on the inside of it. You want to make sure that you place that on it and then you seat it fully into the cavity of the main gear. 
second one comes up. These are interchangeable. One could have gone on the top, one could have gone next, didn't matter. Do the same thing. I'm using a gloved hand to keep the grease off my hand, and I'm really forcing that grease into the pores of that washer. Put that up next, seat that, and we had this big big gear here. We got to clean that up a little bit. There's old dried grease on that. We saw that when we opened this up. I'm going to use the side of a pick just to kind of scrape it away. If, uh, if that's not working, go ahead and use a steel wool or a mild abrasive. We're going to squirt it with the, uh, the penetrating oil. Get it off of there. Dried grease and dirt is an enemy to the performance of a fishing wheel. You do not want it to remain, especially if you're spending all this time cleaning and servicing a reel, there really is no reason why you would want to leave it there. You'll notice that those tags are kind of bent down, they face inward on the reel. One more, that's the shorter one, or the smaller one. That goes on next, I'm going to wipe that away. I'm going to put that one on. I'm going to take this towel and get that out of the way down my grease brush, get some of this stuff off the desk here, and we'll continue with the reassembly. So we got one more metal washer. Again, we have a little bit of grease laying on that. Let's get that off of there. That washer goes on next. And as we observed when we were doing this, there's one small washer that goes there. Okay, we have a uh, jack that's going to push your yoke assembly in and out. I'm going to make sure that we put the grease on the back side of that so it slides easily. I'm going to go ahead and put that underneath the uh, yoke, just like that. One of the things with reassembling the case is we're going to have to make sure that the stud on the eccentric here fits into the eccentric hole here. Okay, that's essentially the main. We're going to take the bearing next. That little uh, indented washer goes behind, behind that. The two tensioning washers go. And you're going to notice there is no instant anti-reverse on this reel. You're also going to notice that these two washers here, the tensioning washers, are cupped washers. They're not, uh, they're not flat washers. Don't attempt to flatten them. They don't belong flat. Here's our two springs go over those washers. And with that, I'm going to get the case now. And notice I have this on the high side. So I want to make sure that I get the stud on the high side as I go to put this on. I'm just going to lay this down for a moment. Remember we had this soaking in that penetrating oil. We wanted to get the old grease out of the case. So let's go ahead and do that. So I think the fourth bearing in this one was in the handle. I think that was the one that was kind of crying as badly as it was when I was doing the test. We have the bearing here is two. We have a bearing on the spool, spool three, and there's got to be a bearing on this side four. All right, if we stand this up now, I'm going to put it at an angle for my view. It may not be good for your camera, but I want to make sure that I get this stud into that hole. Sometimes you just need to turn the lever. In this case, I'm, I just know I'm not getting it, so I'm going to move it down a little bit. And try that again. I'm going to put pressure on the side plates now. And we're just going to work in, until we feel it fall in there. You see how we pulled that in? Pressure on it, moving it so that the stud eventually finds that hole and kind of slides in. Well, remember, we have different screws now. We have round-headed screws and we have flat screws, so I'm going to put one of the round-headed screws below here. And then I'm going to put one of the flat screws towards the top. That round-headed screw still has a little bit of greening on it. I'm going to put some oil on there and it kind of work its way out. Here's the, uh, the flat or tapered head. So I'm going to go opposite that one so I keep equal tension on that side plate as we rebuild the reel. You 
Scott's found some pretty amazing reels at flea markets and I would encourage you to go ahead and look at flea markets, garage sale, yard sales, Facebook marketplace, even eBay if you're interested in uh, finding reels that uh, you can fish with that are affordable or if you're just in the hobby now and you're looking at maybe finding a reel that isn't working but um, you know with a little bit of effort you can make it work and maybe uh, reap the profits for, for selling it as a working reel rather than as a, a parts or a broken reel. Kind of how I got started a long time ago. I uh, had a broken reel and I took it to a, a reel repair shop. The fellow told me it wasn't worth repairing, that the parts and the labor and all that other stuff were going to be more than the reel was worth. Well, I didn't like hearing that. I didn't like hearing it because, well, it was one of the reels that I had had for a long time. It was kind of a sentimental favorite. And uh, so I took it home, took it apart, and uh, found out I have an aptitude for it. And that's why I've been sharing it with you all these years later. All right, all of those screws are in. And uh, you can do two things now. I'm not sure if that's going to spin. Yeah, we don't have the drag on. But we can see that this, the spool is spinning. And when we put that drag on, it will be uh, should be turning that just fine. Okay, we, remember we have a little slotted washer that goes on top. We're going to put the star adjuster on. And then we're going to have to take the other side apart because we need to service the spool. And for those of you paying attention, you notice that the spool does not come out on the gear side. All right, we'll grab that slotted washer now. Square that up and get that on there. And for some reason it's just being a little stubborn. There we go. Just walk it down. There we go. All right. And we can put our handle on. Our handle with the freshly oiled, nicely spinning, not making any noise knob. Yeah, I like that. We're going to put the handle nut on now. It's a 10 millimeter nut. I'm going to tighten the star adjuster down before I tighten the handle nut down. That way I don't trap the star adjuster. And then we want to line up this nut so that it can accept the screw for the cap. And generally speaking, if you have a flat side facing that hole, it's going to enable you to put that screw in. Just like that. Got lucky again. All right. Well, we got to do the four screws or three screws. What do we have? Three screws on this side have to come out because we have to take the spool out and we have to oil the other bearings in this reel. Now one of the things that this reel is not is a level wind reel. Well, those of you that like conventional reels without the level wind feature, this is a nice one. Those of you that like to surf cast, this is a beautiful reel. If you do use this reel with braid, you must back the spool with monofilament before you load braid on it. This does not have a catch or anything that's going to hold that line, so chances are you're going to get braid slip if you do not back the spool with about 10 or 15 yards of monofilament before you load that braid. All right, should be able to just pull this out. Let's remove it from this side. You'll have a bearing in here. You do not need to remove this whole piece. Just load it up. We have the Interesting, we have a set of uh, arms for brakes, but those brakes have been removed. I imagine somebody who was using this was casting it. But you can see that the, the wire that comes through here would kind of be in this race, and the brakes would slow the, the spool compression down. And then we have our bearing in the case here. So let's make sure that we oil that bearing. Okay, I'll right, go back in. It's Pretty much standard fare there. That's all you have to do on this side. It's nothing fancy. You can oil the click tongue if you like. It won't hurt it. Just 
just want to make sure it's clean. It is. Find where your Daiwa is. It's going to be parallel to the bottom from a nameplate standpoint. You could also, even though I put oil in that burn, you could put a, a dab of oil onto the, or a dab of grease onto that spool shaft. That way it's going to ride smooth on the inner race. Back to the parts tray. I grab our three screws. And we'll give this real final test. We'll see how we did. Scott, I know you've been uh, out there uh, chasing the Dorado. I got to believe that this is a beautiful reel for uh, the Dorado fishing out there in Southern California. This fish look wonderful. This looks like you put some 30 pound braid on this maybe. And uh, looks like you got a winner here. As it is, it doesn't stand to be a, uh, a shelf sitter or a collectible. It's got a little too much wear for that as we kind of pointed out there. That one side took a, took a pretty good hit. But you know what? fish on. It's going to go a long time into the future. It's a shame that uh, kind of it was put on the shelf because of that little gear grind, but also I always saw the line that was broken inside, and that caused it as well. i got to believe that we got a nice... Look at that now. Right? You can cast that one a long way. Grab it. Make sure that we're turning. Oh, what a difference. Wow. What a difference. No, no vibration at all. That was the handle. Make sure that your drags are nice and tight. They are. And then if you're if you're going to uh, be fishing with this reel, make sure that you back your your handle off, your adjuster knob off. Don't leave those those drag washers under compression if you're letting them sit around. You saw what happens to those drag washers when you leave that clamp down. They just dry onto the metals and they become uh, ineffective. So that's it. Here you go, the Daiwa Sea Line. It's the uh, SL20SH, Sea something, Sea Hawk, whatever, Sea Wolf. I'm not quite sure what the SH is, doesn't matter. And uh, that's it, it's ready to go fishing and uh, fish for a long time to come. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. To everybody who's a first responder, essential personnel, thank you for all that it is that you do to keep us safe. And to everyone, please stay well, stay watching, and have a great day fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.